you can make. Now, I know the agenda says that the impact that you can make online and how you can present yourself as this authority online. But then when I was thinking of it, the course that I deliver is more to do with actual managers and leaders and our bosses and, you know, things like that, people like that, where we tell them what microphone to buy, what brand it should be, what lighting to, to, to purchase, how they should position their lighting for virtual conferences, you know, what lapel mics to purchase, what speakers to purchase. We actually train them from start to finish on how to appear as this great authority and how to, how, you know, for people to really take them seriously. And, but when I was thinking through and I was preparing the course for today, I have changed it a little bit to actually position it as to how EAs and PAs could help their managers to portray themselves better. Now, what could we do as EAs and PAs to help them to deliver this great image to the world. So before I go there, a little bit about myself. I don't like to say much, but Harriet says it's, it's a must that I introduce myself. So I think you already all know me. But anyway, I have a 23 year career in banking. I've worked for Bank of America, ABN AMRO, and then of course, ABN AMRO got sold to RBS. So I moved with the sale, I literally got sold with them and I stayed within just the banking sector for 23 years. I have, I, I loved what Sue said also because she said, always offer your services, always stand out, always put yourself forward. And I don't know, maybe I have always been able to do that. And with doing so, I handled the PA pool for RBS. There were 23 PAs, delivered trainings and trainings and you know, across the board, I was working for global transaction services, over 600 people on three floors of the 250 Bishopsgate building uh, in London. So it was a great career. But again, she also said, you know, when they reach their goals, you reach yours. And I think that's the same with Lindsay, Sue and myself, uh, you know, today. Um, and with many speakers who've actually branched out and now started, you know, training and helping people further. And I've just been no different. I've done the same thing. But when I branched out, I thought I'm going to have to get skills and I'm going to have to find myself to do that. So I trained with the Professional Speaking Association. I am the president of a Toastmaster Club and I've just completed the 10 year certification from them, which is a DTM. I, oh, I'm obviously a neuro-linguistic trained the trainer. I've done all four modules to the top level. And of course, I got a distinction in coaching and mentoring. But when I did that and I branched out of banking and I left banking in 2012, I started delivering trainings at corporates, universities and schools. So corporates like Bank of England, Nova Nordics, McDonald's and universities like King College, King's College London, Cambridge, and of course, plenty and plenty and plenty of schools and all of that. And with this career, I think it's so important for us to think like that today because we, and that brings me to share my presentation with you. So let me enlarge my screen. There you go. So if we are to help our executives make an impact online because most of everything is now work, working virtually. And of course, most organizations are now thinking, why do we need these huge buildings? Why do we need these flows and flows and flows of people when we can actually do half our work online? So what we have to do is we have to think of ourselves and PAs and EAs as our bosses being this strategic partner and we being the admin support or the admin head. And it, we have to think of ourselves as working as these two teams because we work so closely together. Now, unfortunately, as we've all been chatting today, whatever we do and no matter how hard we work and no matter what we do to make things go perfect and according to plan, something will go wrong. And it's called Murphy's Law. 
every one of us have heard about this. It has to go wrong because that's how it is. Even when we were in the offices, something or the other always went wrong and the PA was always held responsible. Now, more than ever, that happens to be the case. So what I've put together today is for you to look at, tomorrow we look at things from a day-to-day -day work perspective, attribute perspective, skill perspective. But what I've put together today is I want you to look at things from an online perspective of how you can get your boss ready to be this great guy online. How, what, what is every little thing that we can do? And please make notes as we go along because we're going to have a really um, in-depth um, interactive session after this. And I've only got a few slides, but I'm going to run through it very quickly. So getting trained on anything. For example, I've put, I've put an example of Zoom, but you know, we have Google Meets, we have Teams, we have Skype, we have Zoom. And I know that there are so many other, you know, platforms out there. But the idea is to find out what your organization uses, what platform, and to put yourself forward to learn the basic, intermediate, and advanced you know, go in for those trainings and learn those versions so that no matter what your boss asks you and no matter how many times he says, oh, I've forgotten that, I don't know how to do this. Oh, you know what? Um, yeah, that used to work on my computer, but it doesn't work on my iPad. So why isn't it working on my iPad? What's the difference? You will be taught, but we have to put ourselves through that training. And technology obviously is the way to go. And always have your meeting papers, your agenda, everything that you need. Please keep it on a shared drive somewhere. Because I've noticed so many PAs say when I went uh, for the PA Life Conference, the first thing that they say is, oh, you know, Julian, I've given it to him. I've put it on his diary. It's there. Everything is there. But... He can't find it, you know, or he hasn't charged anything. He doesn't have the papers. He doesn't know where to look. And everything's down. Our IT department, I can't trace the IT guy. So please keep things in on a shared drive. Now, as you can see from this slide, you know, keep as much info on a client as possible. Why do we say this? We say this because a client can be online and be talking and suddenly everything goes. There's a problem with IT. You can't connect on Zoom anymore. Zoom has suddenly sent through an update and if you don't update, you can't use Zoom anymore until you update. Half an hour has gone by. So please have all the client information possible. Have as much information on the client or whoever your boss is speaking to as much as possible to hand so that you can provide it as soon as it's needed. And of course, we all think that video conferencing and Zoom conferencing works. Of course it does, but very often it fails us because that's what technology is all about. Always have to hand your company conference call system. So if your computer fails and Zoom fails or whatever system you're using fails, dial them in on the telephone, have if the conference lines aren't working and someone else is using it, like in some companies, they share conference lines. Um, you know, I know at Toastmasters, they share different divisions, share one conference line. So if you want to get on at six o'clock, you can't because there's another club using it. If that is the case, always have a telephone number to hand so that you can call back immediately. Always know who is deputizing for your boss. And if he's not there, who else? can fit in. So sometimes, as we all seen Boris Johnson, you know, suddenly got coronavirus, who's going to deputize? There could be sudden urgencies. Companies are facing so much change today. Your boss could be called away suddenly for anything and you have to be fully prepared. I don't have to tell you this and I'm sure that all of you already have it, but keep a list of all internal stakeholders and their PAs to hand at all times so that you can just jump in and take action no matter if your boss says, 
oh, could you get me that one on the line? And could you put that one on the line? And could you also get her on the line or ask her if he's available? You don't want to be taking half an hour to find that person. You want to have the numbers to hand. We have already talked about this to master technology. And I say this because bosses are complaining. I, yes, it works on my laptop, but it doesn't work on, you know, on my iPad. Why doesn't it work? You know, why can't I connect? Why can't I do a side by side? I saw it on his computer. They had two perfect screens side by side, but mine come up a little bit small at the top. Why is this happening for me? Huh? What's going on? Why can't you fix it? Why can't I look as great as, you know, everybody else? I saw what happened yesterday on Zoom. I can't do that. What's our IT guys doing? Can't they help us? So getting familiar with technology and getting familiar with everything, you know, whether he's on a plane or a train or in a car or on an iPad or on his iPhone, just try to get him all the apps and get him every single thing that can help. Definitely always have a backup plan. All of us have something. Think, what can go wrong and how can I step in and fix it within seconds? How can I do that? And of course, always, whenever, you know, the problem is with updates on whether it's Teams or Google Meet or Zoom or anything, these software companies keep downloading updates that we have to keep on updating onto our computers, our phones, and on any platforms. Every month or so, just for your own peace of mind, do an audio video sync test. It's quite easy to do. And if you go through the training, you will know how to do it within the click of a button. But just testing so that you don't get up one morning and these guys have chosen to send through an update. Your boss doesn't, hasn't done it. He hasn't looked at the updates and he can't, nobody can hear him because the software has been updated and nobody knows why. Again, following online etiquette for every single platform is very, very important. All the emojis and all, great, great, great fun. But following the online etiquette, and again, if you go through the training, you will be able to inform your boss that this is what you do on Zoom and this is how you work with Teams. On Teams, that doesn't happen. You know, on Google Meet. Now, for example, Zoom have this ability for us to share our screens, for us to um, mute ourselves, for us to, you know, become the presenter, make ourselves small or big on the on presentations. Google Meet didn't have very many of these facilities. Last week, they have them all. So if, you, if your boss is using Google Meet, then make sure that you keep abreast with all of these platforms and how they are trying to actually play catch up with everybody, you know, just to be the best that they can be. If you're doing minutes, just remember that even if you are hiding your video, you're not putting your video on, you can just record the conversation. Even if you are not the Zoom master or you are not the owner of the account, you can still record the meeting. It's very easy to do that. You buy a little microphone system, you keep your computer on, you attach your headset to it and it'll record the whole meeting so that your meeting, your minutes, are really, really accurate when you deliver them back. Because sometimes writing, we can forget things. You know, our bosses are so busy these days that we say, oh, can you edit the meeting? Can you edit the minutes, please? Yeah, sure, I'm sure you look at it. But if you can record the meeting, even remotely, it's very, very helpful. Tomorrow, I will share with you some of the, some of the questions that we asked. Um, a very, very, very senior PA uh, from MasterCard to share with us what she's currently going through and what she's being asked to do. And I will share her response with you tomorrow. So prepare a how-to checklist. Again, every time a system changes, every time you find little tips that you can give your boss, update the checklist and send it to him. Say to him, put it, at your, put it on your desk paste it at the side of your computer, keep it somewhere that you can check. Maybe I wouldn't be around. Maybe I'm not going to be well that day. Maybe you can't contact me. 
but keep updating this checklist at all times. It's very helpful. And of course, like you can see over here very clearly. Oh, sorry, I'm going to the next slide. Keep your IT guys closer than close. Any person working with you on the IT front, keep sending them nice messages. Say how grateful you are. You know, even if you can pop something to them in the post, do whatever it takes. But the, this person, male or female, is your greatest ally at this point in time. Should something go wrong, you need somebody to contact. Now, I know that in bigger multinational companies, there's one IT person for about five big, you know, of the big bosses. But does that really happen? Not always. Because the IT person is always attending to someone else. So you can't take the call. Now, more than ever, those five people are becoming 20 people because they're having to let people go. So keeping very good relations with your IT person is great. For you personally, if you do have to put on your camera, you do have to be seen, you do have to take minutes, please always be aware of your appearance. It's very important. Your business appearance matters, whether we like it or we don't. You know, we have that rule, you know, first impressions are best impressions. And sometimes the bosses won't say anything. They are fine. They're, you know, okay with it. And sometimes they go on another call and they see, wow, look at her, the way she's turned out. And then they think, I'm going to think of my PA as well. So do whatever it takes, as Sue said, to stand out. And do be aware of our backgrounds because they actually say a lot about our state of mind and what is happening within us. So be aware of your backgrounds and how you portray yourself. Sometimes, again, you can have an update from Zoom or from any platform and suddenly you put your camera on and you're in bed. And it's 11 o'clock in the morning. Oh, so sorry. Oh, sorry, sir. Sorry. I just put it off. Don't worry. But he's already seen that. He's not said anything, but he's thinking, oh, I wake up at five or six. I go for a run. I get out my, my, my phone. I'm on my, all my emails. I do everything. Wow, what a life. Huh? You see, you don't want to give that impression. So always be aware of where you are. And even if you put on your platform for the first time, just be aware that that camera can come on because of external updates and software updates. And for a whole host of reasons. So that's what being aware is all about. Again, lighting and stuff like that. I just put this in, but it's more to do, you know, with the other uh, training that we do. But again, make sure that you're facing the sunlight or make sure that you are definitely facing the light and that the light is not, you know, at the back of you when you're on Zoom. That gives you a very fresh appearance. We can all have the edge we have that ability to have the edge and to make an impression. You know, there's so much and so many studies that, you know, have been done where they say an image is everything. I don't know. For some reason, we don't talk about it. We don't go down that road. But when we see something really nice and we see some, somebody looking, you know, exuberant and all ready to go for it, it makes us feel good you know it actually helps us to even feel good ourselves so when you are on virtual meetings remember it's always sit for meetings and stand for speaking and you can't go wrong on that front look as i said in the beginning on the zoom etiquette try not to look at the screen look straight into the camera and that actually portrays you as a very highly confident person and of course, people and companies across the world are now starting something new. You know how we used to meet at the coffee machine, how we used to meet at the water machine, in the kitchen during lunch hours. We can't do that anymore. 
but you can actually do that on Zoom. And a lot of companies are doing that. You know what they're doing? They are all coming on Zoom, going on mute and doing their work. Everyone. They're just working, but you just feel we are all there. We are all still there. If you want to have a quick chat, we have a quick chat. PAs are doing it. Sales guys are doing it. Implementation teams are doing it. Everyone is doing it. They have their coffees and they are still meeting up. It kind of tells you that you're not alone. We are still there. We are all still there with you. So doing that and sometimes maybe inviting your boss. You know, when your boss walks into the kitchen and everyone goes quiet, it's like that. So invite him, but say, you know, come and pop in for a little while, but then you know what, go off and do your work. So everyone is doing this and it's actually working really, really well. So with that, I wanted to open up the room to just having, that leads us well into our group discussion or our panel discussion to ask for your views, not just your views on everything you've seen, but what have, has been your experience of working virtually? What are some of the complaints that you've experienced, some of the successes that you've experienced, um, some of the questions, the queries, anything. Let's share and open the room up to, to everyone. If you need to ask a question, could you just eat, put it in the chat? And if your chat is not working, just put an emoji and I'll keep writing the names and we'll ask everyone. But please let's share so that everyone in the room can take away something and can learn from this and go back and help their bosses to make a great impact online because everything that he does virtually honestly depends on you. So there you go. Who I open it up now to questions, suggestions, feedback, anything. And you'll need to unmute yourself, obviously, if you'll need to ask a question. Um, this isn't so much a question, but um, yes. more of an observation, really. Mm -hmm. um, I've been having trouble with my connection, broadband, and which was worrying me, um, you know, when I come on here. I've been on lots of webinars where I've been listening to people and it's just frozen. And I've been onto my provider so many times. Eventually, I touch wood, <laughs> I think they've solved it. Um,